this is the art of thought episode four i know i said it before it was not episode four it was episode three this is episode four recorded on august 1st 2018 i'm your host kwaku asafu jay this time it's gonna be just like the beginning days when it was just me doing this we're gonna be talking about video game rpgs is it the perfect release now what i mean by that is that video game rpgs um i'm saying this based off a personal experience mainly because you know that's mainly what i do on this show um video game rpgs i i tend to play them a lot more than any other type of game like for some reason i get headaches when i play first person shooters um i don't know why i just I just, my brain can't function a first person shooter. In fact, if a game is too realistic, my brain starts hurting or my forehead starts hurting and then I can't play it. Like it, it sucks the energy out of me for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, it, that's, that's the main thing. In fact, let me, let me lower my microphone a little bit. Cause I, I can tell it's going to be a little loud. There we go. So that's the main thing that I'm talking about here. Okay. I'm talking about rpgs specifically role-playing games for those of you who aren't hip to the to the name of video games role-playing games i'm talking final fantasy kingdom hearts a lot of square enix titles pretty much you know the latest octopath traveler even though i have never played that yet xenoblade chronicles um earthbound um dragon age inquisition is the latest one but dragon age i'm talking skyrim i'm talking um anything that that allows you to level up like in some way you level up or you make your character you your character starts off i'm holding this chapstick in my hand you guys can't see it by the way video soon coming up um for podcasts um i'm holding this chapstick in my hand as a character now you start off in rpgs as like a wimpy character he's got these you're at level one he or she is at level one i'll just keep saying he because that's just how i naturally think um he or she is at level one doesn't have any powers really or has like the basic of everything it's like the most basic of basic almost doesn't have any clothes on at this at that point um not known at all in the newer games you can become like a lot of time you become more well known if it's more in depth you become well known in the town um compared to you know other places so as you continue to progress uh, you don't have anything really you don't have any kind of money no nothing you're you're a fresh soul, almost like Rick Grimes in season one. He doesn't know what's going on at all. Um, and then later on, you know, the word spreads. You become more popular. You make more money. You start getting more skills, get stronger. You can defeat bigger and better, stronger things, badder things. Um, get to end game. You start grinding for those, like, crazy loot, which are loot being, like, gear. You know, you get those items that you are essentially, um, you know, it's the luxuries. They make you stronger. Um, and and I'm curious, you know, I wish I wish I could do this live because this is a very um, this is a very deep topic like I tend to do. Uh, I'm curious. Why? Why is it that a lot of us tend to gravitate towards RPGs over over, um, you know, a lot of other games? Yeah, there's other genres out there. You know, we have MOBA genre. We have FPS, first person shooter genre. And MOBA, for those who don't know, is a massively online or ma- multiplayer online battle arena. I believe that's what it stands for or massively online battle arena. You know, whatever it means, we have that. Um, and RPGs themselves have, you know, a genre, a subgenre. We have JRPGs, uh, which are more turn based or have like deeper mechanics, in my opinion, um versus the you know the latest out there nowadays which is like action rpgs where you're literally like doing combos almost in like an open world you're doing combos and just like slashing and whatever it is final fantasy 15 is an example of that in that it's an action rpg now you do level up but there's no there's no turn-based thing you know turn-based doesn't mean you have to have um random encounters obviously turn-based just means that you are you 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 have to take turns you have to wait for the enemy to make their move and then you make your move you know we have those things out there now i believe it's uh i don't know if XCOM, enemy unknown and stuff like that i'm not i'm not sure if that's considered an rpg 
I forgot if you level up or not. No, someone will let me know. Um, but that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about. It's very interesting to me because recently, you know, Xbox Live had a sale and they, they had their game sale, their ultimate game sale. And I purchased the Elder Scrolls Online for like 10 bucks. So I was like, fine, whatever. It's 10 bucks. Uh, unfortunately, my gold is about to run out and I don't know if I'll even bother renewing it. And of course, if I don't renew it, can't play Elder Scrolls Online, which is fine. I'll find other things to do. But like, I got into Elder Scrolls Online, and I think I just cranked out like 16 hours in that game over the course of a week. Um, and it was just insane. A couple days, I got 16 hours out of it. I'm level 10 or 11. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, next thing you know, it's like, I start right now. Right now, I'm recording this at like 5 p.m. And I start around like maybe three you know and then next thing you know it's like i kid you not it's like eight o'clock at night or seven at night or something like that and i i literally lost track of time like the house is dark because i haven't turned on any lights especially in the kitchen my room is dark luckily i have one of those smart homes well not smart homes i have one of those smart hubs called a uh, wemo i think it's from belkin i believe and basically, it just turns on my light automatically at like 7 p.m. or 7.05 p.m. So I don't have my room pitch black, you know, because that can strain your eyes. It's not good for you. Um, but I'm just noticing, like, it took my life away. Like, it's almost like, I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't I don't understand it at all. It's, it's just something that happens when I play games like that. Kingdom Hearts is a huge example. One of my favorite series is series in the entire world out of my whole life of 24 years kingdom hearts most people don't understand the game at all it is an action rpg there's no turn based there's not really any turn based uh, elements in it it's an action rpg even though i do um love act um regular jrpgs that are turn based um but kingdom hearts love the game square enix disney perfect final fantasy and disney together that's like a dream come true to me you know, we all, most of us all love Disney, um, Disney characters. And then most of us also, that was my phone. Let's see. Uh, that was another person on Twitter, but most of us all love Disney. And most of us, um, if you are interested in Final Fantasy, you all love Final Fantasy characters. What's the best of both worlds together? Put them together in one game and or multiple games up to now and have them fight things and like team up that's the greatest thing ever and when i played it as a kid and you know i started playing it as a kid kind of segueing but when i played it as a kid my brain was like crazy and like imaginative you know it still is obviously for me to do this but my brain was like oh my god uh you know uh beauty and the beast we have beauty and the beast in here oh my god we have uh we have the beast we have uh cinderella in here oh my gosh uh, what's going on? We have new characters. Who are these new characters? Sora, Riku, Kairi. We have a bunch of crazy new characters. And then we also have, like, characters from my old past games, Final Fantasy X, Titus. That's how you say his name. It's not Titus, apparently. Titus. We have, uh, Yuna. We have a bunch of people. What? How? Uh, we have Cloud. You know, the infamous Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII. He's in the game in full 3D. Um, and not with block hands. He's got actual fingers. Um, oh my god, we have we have all these like characters. Orin from his that same game, Final Fantasy X. Um, and a similar t story that seems like it could tie into Final Fantasy X. You just have the related elements all together, and it was, just blew my mind. And to this date, I've played every single Kingdom Hearts game, mobile and console, all of them. I've owned all of them up to the PS4 era, where there's the um, 2.8 and 2.8, and then we have 1.5 and 2.5. I don't have that combination one because I don't have a PS4, but eventually I will. And then Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out, which is like, oh my god, I'm 24 years old. It'll be out by the time I'm 25. I don't know when I started playing Kingdom Hearts back in the day. I think it's going to be like an anniversary kind of. So it's kind of amazing um, how much time it drained from me. Uh, let me see something. It just drained a lot of time for me, and it just, I don't know why. So, here, right here, I have this thing here. Um, I'm looking at polygon.com. Try not to breathe into the microphone. I'm looking at polygon.com, 
And uh, this is also from, actually, you know what? Let me look at Lifehacker. This is from Lifehacker. And uh, they said the surprising benefits of role-playing games and how to get started. I'm not going to tell you how to get started. All you have to do is just jump in, honestly. It's not that hard. Um, uh, they say the benefits. This is a funny thing. They're like, the benefits. Uh, this is from Lifehacker. Sometimes this network of uh, websites, including Kotaku and stuff, tend to be like kind of funny in a way. Um, they say playing cr cultivates creativity. Creativity is the bread and butter of role-playing games. They have a certain quality that allows you to transcend typical game interactions. You have real freedom and the ability to move the story forward how you see fit. There are rules for each game, but they also are merely the skeleton to whatever story you and your team want to create. And, and they're saying this here. Storytelling is one of the most powerful ways to activate our brains. Role-playing games do this incredibly well. When we tell stories or experience them, uh, our brains have to process language and cause an effect of events and related to our own pre-existing experiences. While you're role playing game, while you're playing a role playing game, your brain is firing on all cylinders. So it's interesting, you know. We when they're saying that when you're when you're deep into a, a role playing game, say Skyrim, because um, that's the one that's been remade constantly and put on every console since like the PS3 days. And the Xbox 360 days is still on every console up to now, um, and PC. Made a number of times, and yet people still love the game. People still jump back into the game, not just because of the modding, because I, even me, I don't care about the modding, but people still come back. I have a friend who even, like, still talks about Skyrim, and it's just something about it that keeps people coming back. Um, the interesting thing, though, is, you know, me, I went to school for... For photography and studio art okay and i went to high school and i did like engineering and i but i spe started specializing in like 3d modeling um obviously i haven't done much of that recently but it's all i specialized in a place that required me to think creatively i didn't do like engineering where it's mostly math based i specialized in a in a place that you know more towards the architecture side and then when I went to college, I started shifting towards the arts. And yet, my favorite genre is also, you know, role-playing games, RPGs. And then my favorite role-playing game series is probably going to be Final Fantasy with Kingdom Hearts up there because they're they're together in a way. The same brand, they're the same, uh, same company made them, same developer slash publisher made them, Square Enix slash Squaresoft. They used to be Squaresoft. Um... It's just very interesting to me, um, like why I, why why I like that so much. You know, is it the color? Because a lot of these role playing games have a lot of color in it. Um, Skyrim, for instance, um, it's not very colorful in some places. Like they've remade it, they've remastered it so that it's more vivid and stuff for the current generations of consoles. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the thing is. So I think. I might, th here's what my hypothesis, my hypothesis is that perhaps role-playing games are to, you know, like the title of the show, um, role-playing games are kind of a release, like they're the perfect release from life. Um, they're, they're the games that if you have any problems going on in your life, um, whether you like to say it or not or admit it or not, it's probably deep subconscious and you love role-playing games, there's a good chance that you play them for that reason because... Role-playing games are a way you, you may not be able to solve the problem of your solve your current life problem currently. But in the role-playing game, you know, RPG, whatever problem there is, there is a solution, obviously, programmed in. And you can figure it out. And when you figure it out, you become a better person in the game, you know. And you, excuse me, when you figure it out, you know, you become a better person. Jeez, and this food that I just ate. And you become stronger. You may think, you know, maybe deep subconsciously, you may think you're not very strong-willed currently. So you, you you dive into video games, specifically RPGs, for that to 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 strength to feel strong, you know. And then eventually, when you put enough hours in, you become the strongest person out there. You know, you can do whatever you want. You can take on any challenge. You can you can do anything. You know, it's just kind of like a motivation boost. Um, you may have problems in your life. You know, my last episode, by the way, 
that I did episode three that I accidentally called episode four because I lost track of the weeks. That one was based from Demi Lovato's uh, relapse and also mental health. And then, um, and so this episode being video games, the perfect getaway, it seems as if, you know, there's a trend going on where a lot of the topics I talk about is almost like a getaway or almost like a, a way to cope with whatever is going on, maybe in my life, maybe in your life, whatever it is. Um, and video games, there can be, they can be good and bad. you know, obviously you sit down too much. It's not good for your health. Um, me personally, I work out a lot, like way too much, you know, I'm working on being a personal trainer. Um, and in that way, you're becoming stronger, you know, to take on any challenge, mentally stronger. Cause when you work out, working out is a mental thing. You have to really m- be mentally there in order to, you know, to, to do the lifting and stuff like that. Um, whether you do cardio or whether you do actual like strength training, uh, is up to you. But for me, I do kind of both mostly strength and it does increase your strength. And I do play role-playing games, too, which, again, it's all about increasing your strength. And like I said before, role-playing games could be about being strong, getting strong, being going from the weakest link to the strongest person in the world. Um, and you may like to do that subconsciously because you don't feel like you are the strongest person in the world or you don't feel like you could ever potentially become the strongest person in the world. So you you decide to go into playing these games to feel that, you know, to, to fill that void. Uh, you may be in a tough problem. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a sociologist even. Um, but you know, I've had my fair share of my own problems to, to, to be able to imagine that perhaps these are the reasons why, um, this could be a reason of why people love these kind of games. You know, that's why people keep making them. Whether people think, the game is terrible or not there's always gonna be someone out there that loves the game that's just how it is um mass effect andromeda is another type of role-playing game um it's an action-based one it's more third-person action it's more shooter based but it's still role-playing game you start off as a captain your name is captain shepherd or uh, john shepherd i believe or whatever your name decides to be i think the main lore is his name is john shepherd or something like that and um I'm talking Mass Effect 1 through 3, I believe, and it's John Shepard of the Normandy. Your crew, is the, your ship is the Normandy, um, and you have a crew of people that you meet from across the galaxy, and aliens and all, and you go from being just a well-known person to becoming, like, the strongest person that, like, you know, you can choose who your allies are, you can choose to make people upset if they don't, if they don't follow your same viewpoints. Um, that's just kind of the evolution of role-playing games where now we've gone from, you know, where you just start off in a village most likely, and then you doing something, something happens, and then you got to branch out of your village to go save the world. We used to have the basic, that's the basic role-playing, you know, idea. Now it's gone to the point where you have dialogue choices too. Uh, you have dialogue choices. So not only do you have to save everything, but what you say as well as what you do determines what happens in the outcome of the game. So it's it's gotten interesting. And that's kind of like real life, you know? What you say determines your outcome. What you do determines your outcome. So it's kind of like a parallel in a way. Role-playing games are like a parallel to life. Like, that sounds like a good title. In fact, I should write that down. Oh, God, I dropped Pikachu. Hopefully you guys didn't hear that. I'll try to edit that down. But role-playing games... Parallel to life. RPGs, the parallel to life. I'm actually I'm actually writing that down. RPGs. The life's parallel. The parallel to life. Yeah. So that's that's actually a good title that I liked. Uh, or or life's parallel. Um It's just an it's an interesting thing, you know. I I I wish I had someone here, you know, right now I'm doing this podcast by myself solo, you know, the first podcast that I ever did, the first episode um, that I did based off of technology addiction, I did it solo, um, was interesting, 
You know, I got some good feedback off of it. I got some suggestions. And then this one, going to it again on episode four, I'm doing it solo here. And it's it's something that's really personal to me, which is, you know, why, why? You know, the whole reason of the art of thought is why do we, why are, why are human beings this way? Why are we this way? Why, why do we think, for instance, I have a list here of, of podcast topics, but I'm only going to read the ones that I've already covered. Um, why, why is technology addiction a thing? You know, why are we addicted to these things? iPhones, Android phones, uh, Blackberry phones, which are pretty much Android now. Um, why is there so much an argument about what art is? Um, why video game addiction? You know, video game RPGs. You know, it's just, it's, it's the interesting thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, just, you know, just email me. Uh, I'm going to plug my email, even though it's not the end of the podcast yet, but you can email me at, um, the art of thought official at gmail.com. And soon, very soon, I have crafted my own network that other shows will be coming soon very soon after with on different days not just wednesday the network it's called the, the helix network helixmedia.tv um the website's not here yet but it is coming very soon helix.tv is coming soon and also coming soon is the live the live part of this podcast where you guys can actually tune in live and talk about Whatever I am, join me in the conversation. I would love it. This is the main reason why I created this. I want you guys to create podcasts or whatever it is, um, whether it's on a YouTube thing. Join on, join the channel. When the website is built, that I when I build the website, I'll let you guys know. But yeah, so going back to the topic, um, yeah, things like I just didn't add. Going back to the topic, uh, RPGs, the parallel to life. I like that title. Um, I don't know why, I, I really don't, but for some reason it seems like it, for a lot of people, RPGs are a parallel to our lives. It's like, we, why is it that, in some ways, GTA, GTA Grand Theft Auto is an RPG, you know, you start off pretty basic, you know, and then by the time you're done, you have a ton of money, you can buy whatever you want, you know. You don't level up, but in a way, you do get stronger because when you start the game, you really don't have a gun. And then when you're done with the game, you have every gun. You have a rocket launcher. You have access to an airport. You can go on a plane. You can do whatever you want. Um, GTA Online, Grand Theft Auto Online um, for Xbox One, PS4, and PC, you can you, ha- you literally are leveling up from level zero to as, many, as high as the sky's the limit. Um, now they're actually RPGing, um, oops, my monitor almost went off. Now they're actually RPG, um, putting RPG elements in every game at this point. Um, the crew and the crew two, I just purchased the crew two. The crew two, um, is a racing game, open world racing game. Yet you start off at level zero or one. You can go as high as icon, whatever, sky's the limit. It doesn't matter. But as you increase those icon levels, which you get through doing things in the free roam and through races, you get fans. And with those fans, you can unlock more things and do more and unlock more cars and and things to do. And it's open world. You can go across the entire United States of America. It's crazy. You know, we got Forza Horizon 3 and coming soon Forza Horizon 4. Thinks 3 takes place, in, I think, in Australia. And then four takes place in, uh, I think, the UK, like in London. I'm not sure exactly where, but it takes place there. And again, Words of Rising 4, unfortunately, the difference is that you don't you start off with a fairly basic car, and then you can eventually purchase whatever car you want. So it's in a way, it's an RPG of some way. It's like, I wish I could afford this car, but I could never do that. So now I'm going to play this game, and it lets me enjoy that dream of driving this car, even though you don't get the true feel of it. You know, so I'm I'm just curious. RPGs are they parallels to life? Let me know in an email what you guys think of the show. I'm gonna take put it at an end now. You can find the art of thought and me Kwaku. You can find me on Instagram, Instagram at 
that guy Quay K W E is at the end of that. Um, at that guy K W E or Quay. And you can also find the email. You can email the Art of Thought at the Art of Thought official at gmail.com. And soon you can find more information and show notes on the website. You can also find the Art of Thought anywhere podcasts are found. You can find it on Google Play Music. You can find it on not really Spotify, even though it is there. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, which is iTunes. Um, just download the app and you can find it on there. Just search for my name, K-W-E-K-U. Uh, you can find it on TuneIn Radio. You can find it on Stitcher Radio. And am I missing anything else? Um, I'm not sure if I'm missing anything else. But so far, so that's what we can find. You can find it on. And uh, in the coming weeks, I'll be making the move. Oh, yeah, and on SoundCloud, if I didn't say it already. You can find it on SoundCloud, The Art of Thought. Just type that in, The Art of Thought. Uh, type that in SoundCloud, you'll find the playlist, and you can play back the older episodes as well as this current one. I upload each day that I record. Um, currently, it is on Wednesdays. I upload the very same day. Um, yeah, so expect this episode the very same day. Today, Wednesday, August 1st. This episode was about video game RPGs are the perfect release. And as you can tell, the title, what I love it to be, video games, video game RPGs, the parallel to life. Yeah, sounds good. All right, everyone, I will tune out and catch you guys next week or maybe on Friday. I'm not sure. I'm thinking about launching a new show, a morning edition show, just for morning inspiration. We'll see. But yeah, adios, everybody. And... Have a good night.